My name is Johnson here and I'm going to do a video on bench press, how to bench press. Obviously you've seen the title, you know what's going on, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Now this is easily the most incorrectly, maybe squat, this is one of the most incorrectly, maybe deadlift, it is in the top three of the most incorrectly done exercises in the gym with free weights. So I'm going to go for a t-shirt because everyone knows this is the daddy of all exercises. This is, if you're lifting weights and you don't bench, you're not lifting weights. Everyone knows it. Every guy asks every guy, well, how much do you bench? How much do you bench? Well, we're going to try and get people benching in a way that actually gives them some gains because there's been a lot of things all over YouTube talking about how the bench press doesn't make chest development and how it's not a good exercise. We do all these other exercises. I'm going to show you the way in which to bench so that bench can be your only chest building exercise as it really does only need to be that one chest, ex chest building exercise. So, first thing, we're going to start from the ground up. So, the first thing you need to concern yourself when you're doing is your position where you stand and where you stand where you sit on the bench and uh, it comes from the feet. So notice this position here. This is the human ready position. You get into it naturally whenever something requires you to be stable. If someone's coming to push you, you're ready like this. If you're ready to charge, you're, you're ready like this. In tennis, it's from this. And this is a position of stability that has your feet just outside of shoulder width. Slight bend in the knee, weight distributed evenly about the foot, and uh, feet dug deep into the ground so you can use the stability of the ground that goes all the way through the body and creates a nice stable trunk. With your abs tight, your butt tight, and you're stable. From this position is where we bench. Obviously, we'll be sitting down on the bench, but this is where we go from. Um, if I translate this to the bench, you'll notice, here's why I'm going to do it. I've got these plates here. Always have some type of marker dog. For me, these are my marker dog. I put these plates here so I know exactly where to put my feet when I bench. So before I sit down to bench, put my heel against one, put my heel against one. This may seem silly, but it will guarantee that every time you do the bench, you're in the exact same place. Because what you want to achieve is sitting on the bench, tying your abs, is your knees being forced out because that gives you extra stability. Your feet dug into the ground, your shins should be vertical from the side, and you should be with weight distributed evenly along the entire foot so that your the center of gravity is right over what we call the midfoot here, which is the center for every exercise you ever do. Whether you're doing a deadlift, whether you're doing a squat, whether you're doing a press, your weight should always be right here in the middle of your foot. By middle of your foot, I mean the midpoint from the tip of your toes to the back of your heels, which is about here. Once you are square on that, you've done the first part of the bench press. All right, here we have someone else's ready position. Notice she is tiny and she's my lovely model here and she is a girl. And it highlights two things that you may need to do to perfect your bench. The first one you'll notice is bumper plates underneath the feet. This is because the lower leg here, the shins, is not long enough to reach the ground from the bench. And what a lot of people will do if on this position is put their feet up on the bench and try and bench from there. And that is a position of crazy instability and no wonder you can't build a chest because you're uh, trying to get stability from a bench that's rocking around in a place that your body doesn't even like to be in. Notice again, the shins are vertical, weight is distributed evenly about the foot and she's comfortable. If she sits up, let me grab her arm so she's up. Come on, come here. <laughs> From this position, if you stand up, you should notice she's immediately in that body ready position. Bend your knees and get ready to attack someone. Good. Okay, moving up from the feet, chins are vertical, you're in a good ready position. The next part that should be important to you, obviously keeping your knees out, as I said before, is that during the bench, your backside should always be in contact with the bench. No matter how hard you're trying to push or grind or anything, you should never leave the bench. So, if you do this in any way, or don't set your bum against the bench, to bench, you are not benching correctly. So rethink your technique, start again from scratch and make sure it is all correct. Okay, the next part of the bench is this arch that is created by the upper back here. Now the first time you bench, you may experience some discomfort in your upper back as you may not have the flexibility to create an arch. But this is one of the most misunderstood things on YouTube. The arch that people create is based on powerlifting and the fact that you can push more weight the bigger your arch is. So you'll see people going to bench as novices like this. They set up, they get good, put the step back, and they're like this. With this massive arch. And this is hurting me right now. This will enable me to bench more weight, but it's not actually going to help me build more muscle because I'm not stable. I can't create any stability in here, so it doesn't transfer as much of my hypertrophy throughout my whole body and, and teach you to keep a good solid foundation. So what you want to do instead when building your arch is once you lock your hands in, let me set the traps up, 
You want to lie down flat and tense your abs. Push it by to the air, tense your abs. And just put them down. That's your arch. Your butt should be clenched tight, your abs should be tight. That's as much as your arch needs to be. Not right here, just button the air, tense your abs, tense your back side, put it down. Now from here, if you see from the feet to here, you'll notice that my feet are dug deep into the ground, knees are forced out, vertical shins, butt is on the bench, slight arch has been created, my abs are tense, my butt is tense, everything up to here has been set. Okay. In order to keep the bench a chest build up, which is what it should be used for, primarily only, you need to have, execute the bench with full scapular, perfect scapular retraction. What that means is the scapula, which are the shoulder blades, these big plates above here, need to be in a fully retracted position that pulls the shoulder joint back. Now you'll notice you put a hand there, pinching the hand together is how you execute that. Now, the mistake people make is just lie down the bench all loose like this and trying to get tension out of the chest with their shoulders moving backwards and forwards. This is not how you bench. This is how you maybe fly, not how you bench. So you execute the bench like this. Notice that's lockout there, not there. It's there, so you bench from there, and go to the end. Bench from here, go to the end. You don't, what we call protract, the shoulder joint out and pull the scapula out. Now, this is key to setting up on the bench. If I show you here, from the right position, we'll do all those positions again. This is, once you grab the bar, the last thing that you do before you can take it out. Feet set in a good ready position. But then um, the provisional setup, grab the bar, which I'll teach you how to do in a second. Scapula retract, hard to see on film, but trust me, I'm doing it. Tense abs, tense butt, put it down. One of the most difficult, uh, because it requires a lot of trial and error, a lot of people don't know what they should be doing anyway, uh, position parts of the bench is grip width. See all these different grip widths here? Now you will see in your average gym anywhere from here to here, and all of them in between are incorrect apart from one for the, the uh, strict flat bench press. Now I have developed a way of assigning your grip that with a friend can save a lot of time and heartbreak and if you kind of got a friend, maybe use a camera, but it's a little bit more fiddly. But basically, this is what you do here. I'm going to have my friend help me out. Set up any way you feel it makes sense. This will do just outside shoulder width is where people normally advise to set up a bench. Now, make sure you've got your feet in the ready position and all that. Scapula retracted and set. Butt down, arch is there. But then instead of taking the bar out, just take this out. Now, the position we bench from is the sternum, which is here, the breastplate. Not the rib cage, which is here where your, your ribs start after your stomach, and not up here in the nipple line, which is too high. It's just under the nipple line here, just under the pegs at the sternum here. We're gonna use that word sternum for now. Now, what you need from this position is your forearms to be vertical along both planes. And what that means is vertical from the front so that my wrists are completely over my elbow joint and from the front and from the side the exact same thing. Now, if I show you that for yourself, come out of this, what that means is like that and also from the front, like that, straight down from both sides. And if they're from both sides, what that means is, mechanically speaking, it removes a moment arm. But don't worry about that too greatly. All that you need to know is it's the most efficient place to bench from and the strongest you will be. And it's simultaneously, because the bar is here, the best place to bench from to build your chest and to remove your deltoids from the movement and to make it a balanced place for the triceps to work from as well. So, what your friends will do when you set up your position randomly, because you've no idea what the grip width will be, you set up properly, tight, 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 take it out and bring it back to your sternum. And you just ask your friend, friend, am I forearms vertical? No. No. So do I need to move out or move it's in? Out. I need to move out. So I'll move out a little bit, press out of it and bring it back again. And I'll say the same thing, friend, how's that saying? No. No? What do I need to do? Slightly more out. More out. So I'll move out, move it in. That's good. That's good? Yep. All right, that's one plane, that's done. However, like I said, there's two planes. Now, my friend needs to go to the side. All right, friend, am I vertical, my forearms? Mm, no. What's the problem? You need to take your elbows slightly back. My elbows need to go back. That means I need to widen my grip. If 
my elbows are like that, my grip is too narrow. If my elbows are like that, my grip is too wide. So I'm gonna widen my grip a little bit, press out of it, bring it back down. How's that? Better. Better or there? There. We're good? Yeah. And check again at the front. Yeah, that's good. Good. So now, using this, I can put my hands up against the Olympic bar, which will always have some form of knurling. See these two rings here? These are your marker dots. Just like the plates on the floor, I will put this against here and I'll be able to tell, okay, my knuckles go there and my knuckles go there. That is where I bench from. So I can drop this out of the way and put my hands exactly back where they were before. Set up for the bench, scapula, abs, butt, down, push it up, bring it out. And when I bring it down, I should be vertical forearms from the front. Please check. Yeah. And vertical forearms from the side. Yeah. Good. Press out of it, pull it back. I've now set up my grip width forever. Note it down, write it down, whatever you need to do to remember it. Everyone will remember it in different ways because it will never change, assuming you're fully grown and an adult. If you're about 14 and you're benching, it may very well change, but you probably shouldn't be benching at 14. Anyway. Okay, to execute the finding your grip position test again, we've got the broom handle or stick or pole, or whatever you're using uh, in, uh, in, in position once more. Notice the entire body there is set, everything's set up tight, knees are pointed out. Abs are tight, everything's tight. If you take the broom handle down and bring it to the sternum again, now what we're going to do is we're going to try and find the grip position there. Now, notice the forearms are almost vertical there, they're not too bad. You could be a tiny bit wider. Okay, press it out and then push it up, bring it down. Now, this is because you do a good trust grip bench press. Now, if we come to the side, however, what you will notice is black on black, difficult to see, but elbow bar. So, what you need to do is go wider because the bar is far behind you. So press it out and go quite a bit wider and try again, bring it down. All right, now you've got, what you've developed here is your forearms are vertical. So if you just go up again, push out and think about having your elbows directly under the bar. That is more or less perfect and good. And you come to the side once more and what you notice is Bar, elbows, that is practically perfect. From the top, you notice about 45 degree angle. Vertical forearms, vertical forearms. Now, if you push that up and push it against the bench, you should have assigned to you your bench position. Okay, the last connection with the bench will be your wrists. Now, this is a mistake practically everyone makes and they create a position where they're going to injure their wrists, hurt their wrists, why a lot of people need wrist straps. Also, they will create a more difficult bar to press just because by moving the bar in this direction, you give yourself more work to do. It's harder to press that than it is to press that. That's just mechanics. So, you want to make sure that your grip has the heel of your hand, your forearm, directly under the bar and that you are gripping it as tight as possible. You don't want to have it here because it will roll forwards and it could hurt you. So it's not going to be like here, it's going to be with the heel directly under. And before you push, bench it out of the rack, you're going to make sure that it's solid, a solid foundation. You're going to squeeze hard, it will have your knuckle somewhere towards the top of the bar, different people, different finger lengths will have it slightly different. And from there, you're in a position of the bar, of the bar, of the rack. So, Make sure you're not here, which is too far, trying to be too cool, and you're gonna end up dropping a bar on your stomach, you don't know about that, or that you're here, or you're here, or even worse, round here. Now, always have your thumb secured round. Don't try and do this. You may have seen someone do this, they are fools and about to hurt themselves. Secure the bar with your thumb wrapped around it, forearms right underneath, and press it out strong. What will happen sometimes with people is as they bench, it will peel back in this direction. Well, that normally means they're not gripping it tight. Right? So grip it tight. Remember you are trying to snap the bar before you take it out of the rack. Your arm should be so tight that you are gonna snap this 20 kilo steel bar. A common problem with the bench, the most common problem with the bench, is that people forget it's supposed to be done like a robot. Now, whilst technically two joints 
making it a multi-joint movement um, compound exercise, do move during the bench press. The shoulder rotates, the elbow flexes and extends. But because of the retraction of the scapula that we should have, and the fact that you are not actively using, at least in your mind, your shoulders, really you should think about the bench as just flexing and extending your elbow. And if you do that, and ankles, knees, hips, abs, but every part of you, wrists, are all locked in place, locked in stone, you will bench much more efficiently, much more weight, and you will build muscle at the chest, which is the place you want to. If anything slips, if there's a broken link in the chain, if some part of you is moving about, shifting, or any, in any way twisting about, you will immediately find that your bench press, the weight of your bench goes down, and the effectiveness of the exercise drops. So, as a test for you to, to see how this works, do something loose. For instance, this is loose, right? This is not how you build muscle. These are the kind of motions that don't build muscle. Anyone knows this is a hip looseness thing. Now stop doing it, get your hands, and squeeze them together as tightly as you can. While maintaining that tightness, rotate the hips in that same way. What you'll notice is it's more difficult. You can't go as smooth, because our entire body is a kinetic chain. We don't work with isolated systems, contrary to what any bodybuilding magazine might tell you. We work as one. So if one thing tightens up, the body finds it very difficult to make some other part loose. So not only do you do that, cross your arms and tighten your shoulders. So you've got tight hands and tight shoulders. And try and smoothly go around. You'll notice it takes every part of your effort to try and do that. And if you do one more thing and lock the knees in position or lock your ankles in position, and keep, say, your tense your calves or any other part, but even tense your neck to the side and try and do your, your hips, you'll notice that it becomes very difficult to move in a smooth motion because it's very hard for your system to have one part tense and one part loose. So if you keep it all tense, it will all be tense, you'll get a good chest exercise. Okay, this here is the ready position before you take the bar out of the rack. Excuse me if my breathing's, a, my talking's a little bit difficult, but because I'm set up tightly as you should be, it's more difficult to talk, and that should be the way. So if you're having a conversation in your ready position, and you're doing it flawlessly, you're probably not set up tight enough. Now, squeezing the bar as tight as you can, everything tight, every single tight, you wanna press the bar out of the rack. Notice there's a slight bend in my elbows. This is important when you set up your rack. If when you set up your rack, you're like this, the only way to get it out of the rack is to protract your shoulder joint, to push it out. If there's not a slight bend in your elbow, there's no way you can get it out correctly. So it's important you set the rack at the correct height. So, to get it out of the rack, extend, and bring the bar forward to a position of perfect stability. This is where the bar just rests over your shoulder joint, and it requires hardly any muscles to keep this in a good place. Now, you should be tight everywhere. Your scapula should be retracted back, Flat against the bench, tight abs, tight backside, feet squared into the floor, digging into the ground. Could it be moved if someone kicked them? And you're ready to execute your first bench. Note here, this is what happens if you set up the rack too high for somebody. They set up correctly, scapula retracted, everything is tight. Then to get it out of the bench, because their arms aren't long enough, they have to pop their shoulders forward. Do you see how they actually have to protract the scapula? It's all come out now. There's no tension there anymore. They're not set back. And at this point, the bench is totally ruined. There's no way. This can, this can be an effective bench. If she goes to put it back, you'll see somehow her arms match a lot longer. That's because the shoulder blades came out of position. Okay, from the ready position that we established with everything tight, we're gonna make the next movement. And this is where everyone makes a mistake and uh, thinks it's easy, right? You just lower the bar to your chest. Easy, nothing can go wrong. Yes, it can. Now, if you just lower the bar to your chest, most people without a lot of experience benching, some part of the setup will lose tension. You will move your elbow joints forwards or out or something will happen and it will rotate a bar, something like this will occur. If you don't treat the bar as if somebody is trying to pull it away from you, you want to pull it down to your chest, not just drop it down to your chest. Now obviously there's going to be a lot of weight and it really is going to want to go down. You still have to act like someone's pulling it away from you and lower it like that. It's not really to do with speed, it's tension. So it can be like that, it's just the motion should be tight, not that it's that was there. What happened there is as I dropped it down, because I wasn't tight, one of the arms fell quicker than the other, this one, and the bar hit the safety rails I've got set up before it hit me. That is a clear indication of lack of tension. So under tension, 
There's no way that can happen. So this is the eccentric. Pull down the tension. Not here. Every part of you is tense. So when you go to execute the press upwards, which will look exactly the same in reverse, you don't have to try and find tension somewhere in the body and tighten up because you're already tight. You should be tight here, tight up there. The whole thing should be tight. Okay, now to execute the bench press, you want to have a diagonal bar path. What that means is, at the place of most balance here, the bar will be directly above the shoulder joint. But when it drops, it's not going to be at the shoulder joint here. Because what this does is puts a lot of stress on a certain process inside the, the shoulder joint that will damage your rotator cuff by having the rotator cuff muscles soaring against the bone. You never press this way. I'm doing it once for demonstration purposes. Where you want to bring the bar is where I showed you before, the sternum, to this point here. So, since the bar ends more further forwards than it, that it started, right under the shoulder, the actual bar path, which is noted by the end of the bar, is diagonal, because it starts a bit more forwards even though it goes down. So what it should look like is this. And that is the correct way to execute a bench. Note, right at the end, when I push it up and re-rack it, I'm not aiming for the catcher rail. You see what happens there? I get one on the catcher rail, and the other one comes down and executes me. Always aim for the vertical bar, then let it drop. That's the safe way. An incredibly important part of the bench, possibly the most important part of the bench, is safety. And for safety, I advocate, don't mess with spotters or your friend or anything like that, you use steel. This is what I use for my safety. I'm never gonna trust anyone to stand behind my bench and make sure that I'm okay when I'm training. I trust steel, my rack that I bought and put together. So, set up for the bench, nice and quick. Here's your thing, nice and set up. And we check the step pillar, it out, and I'm good. I'm in the ready position now. Now I've got 150 kilos on this, right? 300 and whatever pounds. I'm going to press it down and bring it down here. Uh-oh, it's not coming off the chest. What do I do? Now, under normal circumstances, I said, somebody help me. But with this setup here, I collapse my arch, bring the thing back a little bit, far goes back, and now it's, notice this is right above my throat. Can't hurt me. Why well, I find it hurt me? Because it's bars here. And then rotate the bar, it'll be heavy, so I'll make it look like it's uh -uh. on my way up. And I'm safe. This works because of the angle created by the arch from the chest up down to the neck, making the say the place you set the rails at far lower than where your chest will be when you bench perfectly, yet in a place to catch the bar after you bench. Now this will be a different place for different people. Different people may find that just, just collapsing the arch will be enough for them to set. It depends on your bench, it depends on the size of your chest, it depends on a lot of factors. But you will always be able to find a place where with a perfect arch, pulling it down, full range of motion, all the way down to the scapula, the bar is not touching the safety rails. This is on a good rack, when most racks are good. But if you rotate it back up to the higher point here, towards the shoulders here, with a collapsed arch, you're gonna be about this much lower, which even on a really bad rack, is enough for you to hit the safety rails and safely get out of that bench. You should never be under any danger when benching. This is very important. I, if you've got to go with spotters, that's less your own and you're going to hit the ear. I don't go with spotters, I use safety rails. The last most important part of the bench is you should be always with somebody that knows what they're doing, a professional checking out your form or recording, even better, best is recording everything that you do from multiple angles and checking out what you do. That way you can see if your form degrades in any part of the bench because if any part of your bench is form degrades, even the tiniest amount, like your shoulders come out a little bit when you bench, your elbows splay out wide as you bench, um, anything that, that your arch decays and you drop down flat, if any part is happening at a certain way, that's failure. It's not just the bar comes down and goes back up so you didn't fail and get it up at any, at any cost. The point is to execute a perfect bench every time. That is what training is. It's doing the same thing over and over again perfectly to train your body how to do a movement correctly for maximum efficiency and best growth in the chest. It's not about showing how much weight you can put on a bar. 
somehow get to roughly near your chest and then push back up again somehow with a friend's help and with a lot of grinding and messing about. So it's important that you note down any time that you make any type of mistake, that's a failure. You need to drop the weight back from that because you can't perfectly execute that movement. Hopefully that's been some help. That's bench. Peace. This is the entire bench movement to show you how long it takes to set up in real life and the exact tempo of the lift. You, I've got my marker darts of the plate set down for my feet. I know exactly where to put my hands based on the ring knurlings. I set up my trapezius with my scapula retracted, tighten my abs and place my butt down. Then I can securely press it out of the rack. Now notice how long the bar rests at my chest before being pressed off. It's not touch and go. What that does is enable the chest to use full explosiveness to get the bar off your off your chest as opposed to using momentum built up by springing the bar up and down that is how you build a chest rather than just bouncing about safely put back and that's 80 kilos done note for someone else the model here it's the exact same thing just with slightly different markers the grip is slightly different well, quite a lot different the feet at position is different as the feet are much higher the press is different because her wingspan is over 40 centimeters smaller than mine but the movement is identical the amount of time it pauses at the chest the way the elbows come down how vertical the forearms are along both planes the tempo everything's the same if you line them up next to each other they would look identical because the bench should always be the same safely done